So this question is from Taylor from YouTube. Um, and their question was, I'm struggling to find the right schedule between, uh, to find balance between flexibility, strength training, and pole conditioning. How do you break down your week? How do I break down my week? <laughs> um, well, it's complicated. Um, I have a pretty busy schedule between teaching, training, and kids, and just adulting. Um, go figure. Um, but anyways, for me, what I like to do is I look at my week. I usually kind of look at my week on Sundays. That's kind of the beginning of my week. So on Sundays, I sit down, I look at my calendar, I look at what I have going on for the week. Um, kids things, teaching schedule based on privates, regular classes, workshops, travel days, whatever there may be. Um, other work things, meetings and such. And I plan out my workouts from the beginning of the week. I found for me, if I just put them out there vague of I'm going to train this week, it may or may not happen, especially if I just put it as like, yeah, I'll work out later on tonight. Um, things come up, the couch eats my butt, um, <laughs> whatever it may be. Um, so I find that if I map it out from the very beginning of the week, I can find a little bit more balance. So I'll look at my week and I like to have at least one pole day. Um, because I do straps, I like to have at least one straps day, ideally two, and I like to have at least one stretch contortion day, ideally two of those as well. Um, and of course, I've lately started adding in a leg day. The reason for that one is not so much because I necessarily wanted a gym leg day, but more so because the way my training schedule is and travel situation right now, half of my week I have access to a studio and half of my week I don't. So I wanted to find something that I could do during those other days of the week that kind of gave my upper body, my shoulders a little bit of a rest, but still kind of helped me find a little bit more balance and symmetry in my body. Um, I have a lot of old injuries. I've had a knee reconstruction. I have an old broken ankle that dislocates hot mess. Um, and so for me, my leg day, it's about the only thing I do with weights. Other than that, everything else I train is body weight. But leg day, I actually do use some weights in the gym. I know those things that people pick up and put down and I don't know, never really figured that one out. But anyways, um, I do leg day. Majority of my leg workout actually is focusing on stability stuff. I do a lot of single leg squats, single leg deadlifts, stability things, standing on like balance balls and foam rollers and things like that, that help with um, my knee instability, my ankle instability, and just my overall unstable joints. So that's one day a week, is like I said, I like to have a leg day. Um, pole day, I like to have at least one pole day. For me, I always make sure that I have one pole day that is a pole conditioning day. So if I only get one pole day in and maybe it's only 30 minutes or maybe it's an hour, I make sure I get my pole conditioning. For me, what does pole conditioning mean? Um, for me, where I am right now in my pole journey, um, pole conditioning, if I only have a little bit of time, I start with deadlifts. So twisted grip, cup grip, true grip, I go through both sides, spinning, static. To me, that's my bare minimum. If I only have 30 minutes in the whole week to get in some pole stuff outside of teaching or working on my combos, that's what I do. That wasn't always the case. If I have more time, the things that I add that I used to also do on a regular basis when I was working up to this point was inverts, shoulder mounts, apprentice, cupid crunches, okay? So those were some of my basics. If you're looking for some more um, pointers on some pole conditioning exercise that you can do, check out my ebook. I'm gonna put the link down below for you in the notes. Um, you can also find that on my website, www.elizabethbfit.com. Um, but I've got a whole entire book that breaks down pole condition because that is one of the most common questions I got is what do I do so that I can get stronger for pole? For me, I found that the pole conditioning, if I have a choice between playing around with combos and getting my pole conditioning in, I found that the pole conditioning is more important. Um, doesn't mean I don't like to do the combos. I love doing the combos. That's, that's the fun part. That's the dessert. But at the same time, I found that if I'm not consistently training both sides um, and trying to maintain some of that symmetry, A, I open myself up to injuries because many injuries come from muscle imbalance. And B, if I'm not training my conditioning, when I do go to work on the pole combos, I'm not as strong and I'm not as confident and I'm not gonna be as inclined to try things that are a little bit new or a little bit scary. So for me, first and foremost, is getting that pole conditioning in because it makes me stronger so that then when I do go to work on the combos and play around with those, I feel that much more strong, uh, strength and uh, confidence. Um, the deadlifts also for me, those of you that know me, you've heard me say this before, um, grip strength is probably one of my weaknesses. Um, I have some old injuries, um, for back in my fighting days pre-pull, um, and I actually have some joint 
or well, joint also, joint and nerve damage. So I actually have really bad grip strength. Uh, I've had shoulder dislocations on both sides, surgery on one side, so there are some nerve issues. So I oftentimes don't trust my grip. So for me, actually doing the deadlift training is really a test of my mental and physical on my grip strength. So that's part of the reason why I do that. But like I said, that's also where I am at in my pole journey now. And you should always work with where you are at right now in your pole journey. I've had times where I've had injuries and I've had to back off from the handsprings. Um, and that's just where it's at. You work with what you have, okay? So one day a week on, um, for me currently, is legs. One day a week is getting some pole conditioning. And that, like I said, that might be only about 30 minutes, but we work with what we got. If I have time for more time in that day or on another day, I love playing with combos. Um, either combos that I'm putting together to teach in my classes, or um, if I see a combo on Instagram, I don't know about all of you, but I have like a file a mile wide of saved Instagram to do things. Like there's no way I'm ever gonna get through them in my entire lifetime. Cause every time I see a move or a trick or a picture, and I think I wanna do that someday, I put it on that list. I'm never getting through it. But anyways, it's still fun to hope, right? And that way it's nice. Cause then when I wanna play around, I look for something and I kind of page through it and maybe I find something to work on, maybe I don't. Anyways, so that would be a pull day. Straps, um, to me, I love straps. They're my baby. Um, and I find that they're such a great all around conditioning for pole aerial life, um, zombie apocalypse, whatever. Um, so for me, straps are kind of my baby. If I have to give up one of my workouts a week, I try to have straps be one of the last ones, but it happens sometimes depending on what kind of um, training facilities I have access to because you know, life changes, I travel, things, whatever it is, just life. Um, so to me, I always make sure I get at least one straps workout in, if not two. I mean, a perfect world, I would get more than that, but this is where it's at. So you work with what we got. Um, so for me on my straps conditioning or my straps training, one of those days is always just straight up conditioning. Um, it's working pull-ups, it's working dips, it's working skin the cats, it's working meat hooks, reverse meat hooks, um, roll-ups, basics. Um, which the nice thing about that is that if I do not have access to aerial rigging, I actually have these really cute little like two foot long straps that I use for training. And if I can find myself a pull-up bar, I put them over that and I do them there. Okay. So which likewise, if I only have access to a gym, like when I'm traveling, a lot of that stuff I can also do in a gym. So on that note, if you're looking for aerial conditioning, um, and, or specifically to straps, but even if you're, um, a Lyra artist, a silks artist, or even a pole artist, or just in general calisthenics looking for a great workout, I also have a straps online workshop. That's also on my website. I will put that link down below in the notes as well. Um, and it goes through all of those basics. Like I said, that is my workout that I do on straps one day a week. Second day of the week, if I get a second day to do straps, I change up what I work on, okay? So like I said, I look at the beginning of the week and I structure my training for the week. If I've already looked at the beginning of the week and I know that I'm gonna get two or three straps training days in, based on the time, I switch up what I work on each day depending on how close together those days are. So for example, if it turns out I only get two straps days and they are back to back, which means I'm not gonna have a 24 hour period or barely a 24 hour period to recover between, I change up the things that I work on. So one day I might do more basic calisthenics like things on straps, pull-ups, dips, uh, skin the cats that and on the other day I might do things that are a little bit more out of the ordinary front levers back levers roll up side balance a little more like tricksy like things press up handstands on straps those sorts of things so I vary what I do each day um, so that it's not exactly overlapping a if I get multiple days and especially if they're days that are very close to each other in proximity so those would be the straps days let's see we have uh, leg day um, pole day, two straps days, contortion flexibility day. I always try to make sure that I have at least one stretch day. Based on schedule, it's not always the stretch day I want it to be, but once again, work with what we got. Um, in my perfect world, I would get at least one two to three hour stretch day a week and one hour to two hour stretch day a week. Um, I mean, yes, I'd love more, but that's a little bit more realistic. And even that quite oftentimes doesn't happen because um, once again, life. Um, so I would say as of late, I get one about hour and a half to two hour stretch day. And then my second day is between hour to two hours, but every now and then it gets cut short to only 30 minutes. So if I only get 30 minutes to be able to go through and do a stretch day, I keep it short and I work with what I can get. So I generally focus on my stretching on back bending related things. So that involves shoulders, upper back, 
and hip flexor specifically. And then my goal by the end of the session, if not in the middle, depending on how much time I get, is to get in at least three standing back bends, going from standing back, coming back up, and then whatever kind of variations, if I take it down to elbow stands or chin stands or any of that. But I try to get to um, you know, a, a couple hours in a stretching. Um, also in my contortion flexibility, I really focus on active flexibility and joint stabilization because once again, I have some joint instability issues and also because the techniques that I use that I train for back bending and flexibility, um, that those of you that are familiar with Christina Nakaya Fit and Bendy, who is my contortion mentor and a contortion god, um, if you ever get an opportunity to train with her, she is amazing. Um, and I love working with her and I learned so much from her and it was so great to be able to combine my background in kinesiology and biomechanics which her, with her extensive years of knowledge and teaching and contortion. Um, so like I said, if you ever get a chance to train with her, absolutely take advantage of that. Um, and she's an amazing person inside now. Um, but on that note, um, when I focus on flexibility stuff, I really focus on joint stability stuff and everything is active flexibility because as a lot of people are not familiar with, there's a big difference between active flexibility and passive flexibility. Passive flexibility is when you're just chilling in a stretch or even if someone is pushing on you, but you are not actively engaging a muscle to go into it. Active flexibility is when you are actively engaging and working a muscle, usually the muscle in opposition to what you're trying to stretch. With passive flexibility, we don't necessarily gain strength, but we gain flexibility because after a while as you sit there, the muscles start to open up and stretch. With active flexibility, conversely, there's always a muscle firing, which means that the muscles are strengthening as they're opening. The greater the differences between your passive flexibility and your active flexibility, the more likely you are to injure yourself, okay? So if you have a lot of joint laxity and a lot of flexibility, but you don't have the strength to maintain that flexibility, you set yourself up for injury. So that's something for me, having some of my joint issues especially, and also from my years of teaching um, and my experience is I am a stickler for the active flexibility, not only with myself, but also with my students, um, because I'd like to be able to do this when I'm 80. You might not wanna watch it when I'm 80, but I wanna be able to do it when I'm 80. So, um, and I wanna be able to pass that on to my students so that you all have the best opportunity to be able to get the most out of your bodies and enjoy them while you can. So I spend a lot of time focusing on active flexibility. So one such a, such a week is focusing on that flexibility. If for example, I have some bendy moves I wanna work on on pull or on straps, I'll try and kind of tack those on after that flexibility training. Um, and then the second flexibility session, depending on schedule, it could be that it's part of my pull session. It could be that I only have an hour training on one day and I get in 30 minutes of pull conditioning and then I get in 30 minutes of flexibility there and that's about it. Um, so that might be one training day. So we have leg day, which optional, but yeah. Um, a pole conditioning day, one to two straps days, one to two flexibility days, um, and then handstands. Um, I've found that hand balancing has actually really helped me with a lot of my joint issues and helping me balance out my training because a lot of the pull and aerial things we do, we're always telling you not to lock out your joints. And we're also doing a lot of pulling. Um, pull, aerial is all, all very back and bicep heavy. And we're doing a lot of this. So the handstands are an opportunity to work your joints the other way. And so trying to even out the pushing and pulling on your joints is what helps maintain a lot of that joint health. So for me, I found when I started adding in handstands to my training, it increased the amount of time that I could spend training and not overtraining and injure myself. So winning. Um, so for me, I put handstands into parts of my warm up. I put them in between sets. If I'm doing a conditioning thing on pull, I'll do a pass. I'll come down and do a couple handstands. If I'm doing conditioning on straps, I'll you know do a set of skin the cats and then I'll come down and do a handstand or two. I work on press handstands someday. I work on you know kicking up into handstands someday. Although I like presses better. But anyways, um, so handstands I integrate into almost all my training days. So I would say I work on those five to seven days a week, even though it might only be 10 minutes some days and other days it might be an hour. It just depends on how much time I get. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put a, like a snapshot of the what my training schedule looks at the end of this video. So make sure you watch for that, just so I can kind of give you an idea, because as I list through all these, you're thinking, holy crap, like there's not enough hours in the day. But a lot of this, remember, there's a lot of variability in this. And a lot of it is, it might be 30 minutes one day of this exercise, and then 30 minutes the other, and those are in the same day. So when I list off all of these, you're thinking like there aren't 10 days in the week. 
Um, it, sometimes it's a matter of combining different exercises together. Um, and as many I'm sure of you have found in the pole aerial world, there's not enough hours in the day to do all the things that we want to do. Like lately, I would love to do more rope. I just don't have time. I love Lyra, but I just don't, don't have time. And lately I'm not teaching a lot of Lyra, so I really haven't been spending that much time on it. But one of the things that I found that's the great thing about doing all the different apparatuses is every now and then we all go through phases where we're like, eh, I'm just not feeling inspired. I rotate to an apparatus and it's great because you know you come back to being inspired it might be that i'll go through phases where i'm not feeling super inspired on straps or maybe a little bit discouraged i'm like ugh, i'm still working on the same things and you know i feel like i plateaued i'll keep working on the conditioning but maybe i'll you know play around with the rope instead or i'll play around the lira instead or pull mix it up um so the nice thing about all the pull and arrow stuff they all complement each other nicely but definitely finding that balance is a good thing regardless of what your air apparatus of choice is I would encourage you to definitely invest some time in flexibility because that will help you maintain your joint health even if it's only 15 minutes two to three times a week as part of your warm-up or your cool down um, and i would definitely encourage you to spend some time working on some stability stuff on your joints especially your shoulders if you want some tips on that there's that link for a video below that's um, my shoulder warm-up that i like to do it'll go through some shoulders some upper back and things like that um, if you're looking for some more pole conditioning things that you can do to work into your training week. Also I'll put that link down below for that ebook um, if you want kind of a list of some things to do. But my encouragement for you is sit down, look at your week, look at what you have in your upcoming week. Whether you like to have a paper written calendar and you like to write it out, pen and paper, pencil and paper, whatever it is, or if you use it on your phone, if you use it on your computer, whatever it is, um, write it out. Basically you make your ideal week. Okay, you put together and you'll go, okay, this is roughly what my week looks, depending on whether it's work, school, kids, life, sleep. I'm not sure what that is. No, um, depending on what it is. And then you put in what your ideal workouts are. Be realistic. Um, I always have like, this is roughly what I like to do. It doesn't always work out that way, but at least I have a goal of where I wanna go with everything. Um, and then on top of that, then for each of those different things, I have goals, but we'll get into that in another video because that starts to get really long of like how I structure each of those individual workouts. So this is kind of just a broad over of like, how do I plan my week and how do I look at it and how do I survive all of it? Um, Cause it's kind of scary and uh, overwhelming at times. Um, but yeah, hopefully this just kind of gives you a little bit of a, a once over. If you have questions on this, um, cause like I said, this is a very broad kind of overview of it feel free to leave those below. I'd love to do a, a live video of this and be able to answer your questions. So if you have more in-depth questions on this, definitely feel free to leave those in the comments below. Um, or if you wanna schedule a consult and do definitely a specific for your exact needs, um, you can definitely hit me up for that and uh, email me, contact me about that. So hopefully this video has been helpful. Like I said, stay tuned for a couple seconds here. I'm gonna post a little pic of, the, uh, of my ideal training week so you can kind of get a look at it and see based on like my teacher schedule my kids schedule my you know just to kind of give you a feel for it because um, it kind of seems very abstract when you just hear someone talk about all those little things in there so questions comments leave those below um, anything requested video tutorials for future where you want to just see the floating head which I know is really weird for me um, but try um, <laughs> but if you have any requests definitely uh, throw those my way and hopefully this was helpful and happy training